I love that song, The Blue Christmas. That, you know, Elvis, yeah. I'm a huge Elvis fan. They used to sing it in karaoke all the time. Uh, well, my apologies, um, then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you know, it, if you listen to the words of that song, you know, a lot of us are having a blue Christmas. Uh, the holidays seem to bring out kind of a sad, somber time, uh, whether families that are lost or uh, disconnected or estranged. So the holidays kind of stir up some emotions for some of us. And for some of us, it's a good time. I mean, we have wonderful times with our family. So what I want to encourage you guys to do in this holiday season is to not be alone. Um, you have people here that are sitting here that are coming here every week. I just want to encourage you to reach out to them. You know, if they're alone, just say, hey, come, let's hang out for Christmas time. You know, let's not be alone. Um, some of you have heard about the shooting that happened this week in San Bernardino. If you guys heard about that, uh, horrible news. Uh, so actually, one of the uh, ladies that was shot uh, actually used to work at Goodwill, uh, where we work, and uh, so it's, it hit home. And, and you know, when these type of things happen, I remember when 9/11 happened. Uh, you know, the country was on edge, and uh, there was some uh, racism and, and some of those things going on. Um, so we don't want that. Uh, obviously, we want to be protected. Uh, but we do definitely need to, to pray to God and, and involve Him in this tragedy and pray for those victims. So let's bow our heads and let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, God, I just want to pray right now for the victims and the families, uh, Lord Jesus, that have endured this uh, horrific tragedy, including uh, the friends and families of even the, the perpetrators, Lord, that did this. And maybe they're in shock as well, Lord. Um, but God, we're all, in, as a nation, we're all on edge right now. And, and what we don't want is we don't want any discrimination. We don't want any prejudice going on. Uh, we just want to be loving. We want to be loving just like Christ was loving here. Uh, we know, God, that the only only race there is is the human race, just comprised of different ethnic groups. And uh, So help us to just see that. We're all human. We're all human race. And we don't need to attack each other more. Um, so be with us. Help those and comfort those that are affected by this tragedy. And just help us to enjoy and have joy during this holiday season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you're new here today, we're doing a series called Life Healing Choices. We've been doing this for a couple of months now. And where we're at is we're at step four on our inventory. And uh, actually, we pull out um, not the big sheet, but the little sheet. This sheet right here. This is what we're going to look at first. And then at the end of that, I'm going to go over the big sheet and explain what that's all about. Um, so if you pull out your message notes, you're going to see it says, Coming Clean, the House Cleaning Choice. Um, what is that? What does that mean, the, the house clean? Why do we need to clean house? Well, how many of you guys um, have ever had trash stored up in your house, right? You let it go for too long. Let me pack see rat. Yeah, pack rat. Or maybe you just didn't take the garbage out. Maybe there's food in there. And what would happen after a certain amount of weeks if the trash just accrued and you didn't take it out? Maybe you were depressed. Yeah, it would start to smell. And then maybe just one room would start to smell for a few days and then it would seep into the other rooms and then the other rooms and before you know it, your whole house smells and then people walking past your house smell your house walking past your house because the trash has accrued for so long. So this inventory, what we're doing at this particular step, we're teaching you guys how to clean house, how to do it the right way so you're not hoarding, you're not holding on to unnecessary resentments or unnecessary uh, things that, that are causing you, like guilt, uh, that are causing you to leak out and seep out into your relationships and into your life. We want to free you of that. And, and being in Celebrate Recovery, I know firsthand the value of taking out the trash. Now, we're going to use the analogy of an attic. And in the attic, you know, a lot of people have attics. They put boxes and stuff in their attics. And, and you know, they just put stuff in there. And over time, they put things in the attic and it just becomes overwhelming of stuff. So what we're going to teach you to do is we're going to teach you to go into your attic, your own personal attic, and, and take out certain areas of your life and look at it and clean it out. That's what we want. And only by the power and grace of God can you get freedom and healing for these areas. So if you look at your message notes, you're going to see it says, the principle four, it says, I openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. And if you notice on there, there's three separate things. There's yourself, which you got to start with yourself. You have to start with admitting the areas of weakness of yourself, things that you did or things that were done to you. That's called stepping out of denial. And then you confess your faults to God. You go to God. That's where the power comes from of forgiveness, is from God. You go to God and you say, God, this is what I did. Please forgive me for these things. And you have a list of things that you ask for God to forgive you for. And then you go to someone you trust. God doesn't just design it for you to go to Him. He wants you also to confess it to other people. 
And that's where the healing comes from. And God says in James 5, 16, confess to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. So it's God's formula. I didn't write it. It's just in the Bible. And that's what we're to follow. And when we do those things, we start to become happy. We start to become joyous. We start to become free. And it says there in Matthew 5, 8, happy are the pure in heart. That's your memory verse for this week. I want you to remember that verse because that particular verse is going to be the verse that I want you to think about as you're doing your inventory, as you're doing this step, because that's the goal. That's the end goal of doing this. In step four, it says we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. It doesn't say of the person next to you. It doesn't say of your children. It doesn't say of your parents. It says of you. You're looking at yourself. And yes, other people may have faults, but God wants to teach us to look at ourselves so we can do what it says in Lamentations 3.40. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. God wants us to grow up. He doesn't want his kids to be infants forever. He wants us to grow up and become more and more mature. And in Psalms 139, this is the prayer that we need to be constantly doing as we're doing this step. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything in me you find that makes you sad and lead me along the path of everlasting life. You guys know the difference between condemnation and conviction? I've, I've said this many, many times. Condemnation is, a, is a, uh, attacking your identity. It's condemning you. It's basically saying you're guilty, you're going to jail, basically. That's condemnation. Conviction is discipline. It's conviction. It's pointing out certain areas of our lives that God wants to improve on. One attacks your identity. That's where Satan goes after. He goes after your identity. He wants you to feel worthless. Whereas God doesn't want you to feel worthless. He wants you to feel worthy. Worthy of being changed by God. And God wants to change those certain areas in us. Not to, not to attack our identity, but to grow us and make us stronger people. So... I remember when uh, it was, uh, I think it was my daughter's birthday, it was about, I think in February, I was trying to make her a cake, I, I think it was, and uh, I was really trying to do this, and um, and so I remember uh, printing out the recipes online, and uh, so what ended up happening was, I didn't follow the steps accordingly, I, I, I did the little, I did the mixing of the flour, I did all the things, but I missed a couple of ingredients, I missed a couple of things that were done right. And I was just trying to rush through it because I was in a hurry. What ended up happening is the cake didn't turn out too well. It was a, it was a, it was actually was horrible. And so I ended up, I think, throwing it away. And I've done this many times. I make cookies and I forgot, you know, uh, some ingredients, or I forgot baking powder or one of those ingredients that you make for the cookie. And, um, and it just didn't turn out right, right? Because I wasn't following the steps. Now for some of us, we, even go into recovery without following steps. We want to change, but we want to change on our time. We want to change our way. Or we want to do recovery for a little bit and say, oh, I'm, I'm healed, I'm fine. I can go out and, and, and do things again, you know, whatever. And that's not recovery. Recovery is a process and it's never in your timing, it's in God's timing. So you may look at this uh, inventory, you may look at this message, and you may look at it, okay, this is a great concept. But God wants you to start the process. He wants you to answer the question. He wants you to look at your relationships. He wants you to look at your tendencies. Not for anyone else's benefit, but for your benefit. He wants you to live a freer life. And recovery is one day at a time. It's one day at a time. It doesn't happen overnight. Now for, for me, there's things in areas of my life I need recovery from. Some of you are here today, and you need recovery from certain things. Maybe financial recovery, relational recovery, uh, maybe drugs and alcohol recovery, whatever it may be, in whatever particular area of your life, God allows that area of struggle in your life because he wants to prove to you that he can help you overcome that. Because ultimately the universal thing with every single person that's walked the face of the earth is that we all need God. And some of us, we don't know we need God until something bad happens or we struggle in some area where we have to have no choice but to rely on God to help us overcome it. If everybody was perfect and we were all flawless, would you need God for anything? Would you ever admit a need to needing God for anything? No. God allows the consequences of our own mistakes so we can eventually get on our knees and pray to God to helping us to overcome whatever it is we're going through. 
That's how God works, and that's what he does in our lives, and he allows in our life. But it's not just your life, it's all the lives for, for past, present, and future. That's the formula for God that God wants us to do. So as I said, we're going to be using the analogy of an attic. And the attic is, is, is uh, you know, the, the top room in, in the house, right? So we're going to open the attic. We're going to be brave and open the attic, and we're going to pull out each area of our lives. And with, if you notice on your notes, you're going to see there's questions after each of these points. There's questions that I want you guys to answer. If you grab the pen, perfect, because I want you to start writing those out, filling out those questions, writing the answers to those questions. If you don't, you're just hearing my voice. And although my voice is okay, it's not sufficient for you to make the most of this step. You have to participate in this step. If you don't, it's just, it's not going to do anything. So I want you, I want to encourage you guys, whether it be today, tomorrow, or Monday, or whatever, I want you guys to spend a long time and write down these questions and also participate in the spiritual inventory worksheet that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So with that said, I'm going to call up my mom as she talks about the first area that you need to pull out of the attic. So let's hear it from my mom. All right. If you look at your notes down there, it says the first one is relationship with others. And in Matthew 6, 12, 13, it says, forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Don't bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Why is this so important? Why is it so important that we work on relationship? Why is it so important that we are doing this moral inventory? This last week just showed you why it's so important. If you don't clean house within yourself, taking the Lord with you, you have a choice. You have a choice of being depressed and withdraw and then being isolated or overreactive, angry, and thrashing out. Welcome to Satan's world. If you don't work on this, you are giving Satan a threshold, a foothold in your mind and your heart if you don't work on this. If you don't ask Jesus to help you with this inventory, he's the only one that can fight these battles for you. You can't do it on your own. So you need to do this. So what does it say down here? One of the questions is, who's hurt you? When you write this down, and we have those sheets back there again, when you write this down, pray about it. I'm telling you, it's an experience that I will never forget. And as I said last week, I did this eight years ago. So I sat down, I had my sheet, and I said, okay, Jesus, show me what I may have been hiding even from myself. I may have been reacting and triggering to things, but I don't know why. I may be hiding the core, the reason, from myself. Help me to see it. Reveal it for me. And I did this at the year 60, which is old. I don't want you guys to wait so long. Clean house earlier. So I did this. Tears rolling down my face. The first question, who has hurt me? Who has hurt you? Be really honest. Be really honest with his inventory. The next one is against whom have you been holding a grudge? A grudge is just gonna make you angry if you don't figure out why you've got that. <coughs> And there's no, there's no judging anybody who has this. We all have it. Somebody has done something to hurt every one of us. Breathing. Even, even the other person may not have known they hurt you, but it hurt you. So you need to look at it clearly. Nobody is exempt of this. Nobody is. The next one is, against whom are you seeking revenge? Well, where would that take you? Where would revenge take you? It's not a pretty road. It's Satan's world. There is so much anger here in the Civic Center alone, let alone San Bernardino, Paris, and everywhere else. There is so much anger. Wouldn't it be amazing 
if we could stop that right now here, if we as a group right now, just this group, we are going to be Jesus' soldiers. We are going to change the picture of this world. We are going to change the picture of this civic center. We are going to change it. We are going to be the light. If somebody says something mean to us, we won't overreact. We'll recognize they have had issues too. Somebody's hurt them too. Rather than looking at what